So the last few videos have all been discussing very specific types or models of continuous time signals that we'll use in this class. This video will wrap up this little sequence here to talk about just a few more specific types of signals. The first that we'll talk about in this video is what we call the rectangle signal, called the rect single signal. Sometimes the uh, notation capital pi is used for this. So if you see like a capital pi with um, an argument like this, you also know it's a rectangle function. And all this is, is a signal that has a constant value of 1 for some portions of the time axis and 0 elsewhere. The region where it has a 1 is when its argument has a value between plus or minus a half. So if you look right in here, as long as little t is between minus capital T over 2 and capital T over 2, this condition is satisfied and it's equal to 1. The way I like to think about the rect function is that this denominator here, capital T, tells me the total width of this rectangle pulse. So if the total width is capital T, that means it exists from minus T over 2 to T over 2. So on that time interval, minus 2 over 2 to T over 2, it has a value of 1. As you change this denominator, the total width of the rectangle pulse signal changes. So we use this quite a bit in the class. The triangle signal is similar to that. So we use this delta notation, this capital delta, to indicate the triangle signal. Some books you'll see like a capital lambda to indicate the triangle signal. This signal is similar, but instead of being just a constant value, it has a ramp. So right here we can see 1 minus the absolute value of t over capital T. So this triangle signal is called a triangle signal because if you plot it, it looks just like a triangle. It's zero, it linearly ramps up, and then it linearly ramps down. you got to be a little bit careful here. What you'll notice is that the triangle signal is defined equal to 1 minus this quantity for all values of absolute t less than or equal to capital T. So there's no halves floating around here. So the triangle signal actually has a total width of 2t. So on the triangle signal, when you look at the denominator, that tells you half the width. This triangle signal actually starts at minus t and goes to capital T. It linearly ramps up and then it linearly ramps down. And you can see that just by plugging in here. What is the value of the triangle signal when t is equal to 0, little t? Well, when little t is equal to 0, this term is 0 and I'm left with 1. As little t increases, let's say t is equal to capital T over 2. Capital T over 2 divided by t is a half. 1 minus a half is a half. So you can see it ramping down until eventually when little t is equal to capital T, capital T over capital T is equal to 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So that's when this signal goes to 0. And you can make the same argument for negative times as well. So that's the rectangle signal and the triangle signal. Another signal that we'll see quite often in this class is a function called the sync function. So this is not a typo. If you've not seen this before, this is not a typo. It's not supposed to say sine. The sync function with a C right there, sync of t, is defined as sine of t divided by t. This is actually an even function of time. So if we were to plot this, it is indeed an even function of time. And um, to think about what values it takes on, um, well, let's think about that. The sine function on the numerator we know is going to have zeros in certain spots. Anytime t is some multiple of pi or plus or minus 2 pi. So because of the sine function, there are a lot of zeros in the numerator when we're at some multiple of pi. So we know that this function is going to go through zeros at those time instances. At time equals zero, something interesting happens. When t is equal to zero, we have a numer zero on the numerator, and we also have a zero on the denominator, so it has the form zero over zero. We know what happens, or we know how to deal with zero over zero. From calculus, we use L'Hopital's rule. So if you were to differentiate the top, you would get a cosine term, differentiate the denominator, you get one. So that tells us that at t equals zero, the sinc function is actually equal to one, because cosine of zero is equal to one. So the numerator, as t is varying, is oscillating up and down. It's going up and down and oscillating as a function of time, going through zero um, at multiples of pi. The denominator, as t changes, say as it increases linearly, the denominator is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we kind of have this oscillation on top 
with as t gets large, things decaying, getting smaller overall. So let's think about what this looks like. It looks like this. So as time goes on, it oscillates back and forth, but the magnitudes of these oscillations are getting smaller with time due to the denominator, t, being present. So this is the definition that we use for the sinc function in this class. Sinc of t is equal to sine of t over t. You have to be careful. Please note this. Different Authors and different websites and books and tables use slightly different definitions for the sinc function. Sometimes sinc of t is defined as sine of pi t over pi t. So they like to throw the pi in there. That definition of the sinc function is a little nicer because that means when t is an integer, see if t was equal to 1, then sinc of 1 is really sine of pi times 1 on the numerator, or sine of pi, which is 0. Or if t was equal to 4, sinc of 4 would really be sine of 4 pi. We would get a 0 on the numerator. So when you define your sinc function using this other definition with pi's in it, the sinc function has the nice property that it goes through zero crossings at integers. So when t is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's kind of a nice property. There's no real great reason to do that, but that's what some people do. We don't use that definition in this class. The way we define the sinc function is sinc of t is sine of t divided by t. So if you're ever, you know, looking something up on the internet or looking up a Fourier transform table and you're dealing with sinks and you end up getting an answer and it's just off by this factor of pi, just be aware that that could indeed be the issue that you're seeing.